Welcome back to the Composing Made Simple podcast. This is episode 22. Today's episode, we're going to discuss the podcast being on YouTube, BBC Spitfire Chord Discover, we're going to get Chris and Curtis's opinions, and then finally we're going to go into our main topic for this episode, is the Spitfire drama with the Westworld competition. So I hope you enjoy us for this episode, so let's get on into it. Composing Made Simple, we talk about something new every show, Composing Made Simple. Have a seat and let's go. All right, welcome back, guys. It's been a couple, a couple of months, and uh, you yes. guys were busy. I was busy, but we're finally together. We're all back together to record an episode. So, how's everybody been doing? Good. Yeah, it's been busy. Yes, it's been very busy. busy. Yes, I think the last time we talked was right when the pandemic was starting, and we've we've been through it now for what three months, and uh, we're finally mm-hmm. back. And we have a good episode today. Um, what we wanted to talk about was, uh, since I talked about it last time, the BBC Spitfire Core Discover thing, but I wanted to get Chris and Curtis's opinion on it. And then obviously we have to talk about the Spitfire drama, the contest, the Westworld. So we will go into that. But off the top, I just wanted to mention for everybody, we will be releasing the podcast now on YouTube. I have... Uh, I think the first two episodes, the first two episodes that we did from two or three years ago is now up on YouTube, and you can find those on youtube.com slash Todd K. Edwards on my channel, and I will slowly be uploading all of the backlog, and then going forward, all future episodes will be continue to upload. So nothing else will change. Um, it's just going to be an audio version. We're, we're still playing with maybe we'll do a video and just upload it to YouTube for video, and then you can still get the audio form. But uh, just uh, want everybody to let everybody know because we've had a few people say that they can't find the first couple episodes. So now you should be able to f- listen to them all in its entirety. And I did create a play- 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 I did create a playlist. So <laughs> there you go. If you want to spend seven hours of your day listening to Composing Me, <laughs> that would be awesome. Uh, but anyway, we appreciate everybody that's listening and supporting us. Definitely. All right. So with that out of the way, let's go ahead and cover the BBC Spitfire Orchestra. Um, Curtis, do you want to go first? Sure. Um, so uh, Spitfire released. Uh, it's now been a while since it was <laughs> more than a month ago, but we'll get on this train here uh, a little bit late. But um, they released uh, versions of their BBC Symphony Orchestra uh, sort of pared down ones. Um, so they released a core version and a discover version. Um, the discover version is very much like almost like a free trial. I think really do think this is like Spitfire's kind of like take on the free trial. Um, you know, they, they get criticized a lot because they don't offer a lot of, you know, free trials or um, refunds or license transfers. So I think this is honestly kind of uh, an option for them to be able to kind of say, well, okay, here's, here's sort of one for BBC. Um, Discover is a very, very, very stripped down uh, version of it. It's only like 200 megabytes, mm-hmm. I think. Um, yeah. It's uh, obviously one mic position, um, not all the instruments, uh, but most of them. Um, and it's obviously like, you know, very limited articulations. And even those are really, really cut down. Um, you can pay for it. It's $45 to get it right away. Or you can do a little uh, dance with like a registration page, fill out some questions, and uh, they'll give it to you for free, um, which is pretty cool. Um, and then the like, core like version. a week or two, I think, to get it, if I remember yeah, correctly. Yeah, I think it takes yeah. two weeks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's that waiting period there, uh, which is, I think, what they're counting on impatient people. <laughs> um, <laughs> And then there's the core version, which is basically all the same instruments, I believe, as the pro version, but only one mic position. It's just their mixed mic position, um, which honestly, you know, I, I've had BBC since it came out. And obviously now my version is the quote unquote pro version. I mean, it used to be the mm-hmm. only version. Now it's the pro version. Um, and I, that's the mic I use for the most part anyway. Um, you know, I really like BBC SO. I think it has, you know, some weaknesses, just like any library. The the brass uh I wouldn't say it's weak, but it's not the sound that everyone's going for with samples all the time. So depending on what you're doing with it, the brass might not really be for you. But I think the strings are exquisite. They're lovely. Uh, it's pretty much become my bread and butter string library uh, right for right now. Um, uh, and I've been really enjoying it. Um, and like I said, like just having that that one mic is is pretty good. Um, it's it's a really good position. The only thing I think I would miss if I didn't have Pro was, were the spill mics, which really do sort of 
make everything sound really 3D, really nice in a space together. Um, I sometimes will actually, I'll be using, you know, some other library like, you know, CineStrings or whatever. And uh, I'll actually sometimes just double that on the BBC stuff with only the spill mic. Um, and it even to that can give it some depth and, and, and presence and space, which is really nice. Um, so, yeah, I think this, these are pretty cool. Um, you know, if this isn't for you, it's a very concert sound. If that's not what you're looking for, this is not a library for you. But uh, it's definitely um, nice to see Spitfire uh, putting out a cheaper version of the product. Obviously, that allows more people to have it, which I'm always a big fan of. So, yeah, I mean, I, I, th- I, th- I mean, I mean, me personally, I don't have the pro library i didn't get it when it first came out i wanted to see how it would develop and how people respond to it and for the most part it seems like uh people are relatively um positive with it i mean they're happy with it and it seems to give them um just a really well-rounded uh workhorse library like curtis and todd have mentioned so i think um i mean my me my my survey downloaded it and i've been having a play around with it and to me the the sound sounds great um, with the limited articulations, you you really get um, kind of a, a a taste of what the full thing is kind of like. And I really appreciate that, you know, Spitfire is kind of doing that. And it seems like they're very, very proud of this effort, like the BBC, getting the BBC to do this library for them. And they want, it, they want to get this into as many people's hands as possible. So this is a really cool way to do that. Um, so, yeah, I definitely want to kind of do some sort of video trying to you know, write kind of a trek with with Discover, but it seems like a, a very, um, especially for people who maybe don't specialize in orchestral music, like maybe they're doing other genres and they want some orchestra in there and they don't really care about round robins and all that, but they want a realistic sound. It, it kind of feels like Discover would be a really nice way to do that and get them into their, um, into Spitfire's ecosystem as well as the lab stuff. So, you know, per- personally, I, I feel like it really just interesting people to what the BBC is all about. And then the core version is a, is a really nice um, upgrade to that. And I feel like for most most beginners, for most people who are just starting out, the pro and like full version would be slightly overkill for them. But the core seems like a really nice like balance. And the, it seems like the mixed mic position is what um, you know most people would be using anyway, like Curtis said. So uh, yeah, you, you're pretty well covered there, I would think. And the mode switching is a really cool feature. Um, mm. You can actually like... Like you could write a track with Discover and then you could send it to me um, and I have Pro and I can actually then switch all of them to the Pro version Mm. uh, and it'll just switch them all in my DAW for me. And then I'm using the nicer samples that have more round robins. Now, it's not always going to translate perfectly, right? Like obviously there's not a legato sample in Discover. So it's just basically Mm -hmm. a long sample. So it's not going to magically make everything sound perfect all the time. Like you're going to have to go in and kind of mess with it. But I mean, honestly, that's like what adding a key switch, yeah, <laughs> uh, right. you know, that's not too bad. Yeah. Uh, and that's a really cool, cool feature. And I, it just the reason I really like that is that, you know, they kept talking about, you know, um, collaboration mm-hmm. when they yeah. first uh, released mm-hmm. this. And this is really them putting kind of their money where their mouth is and, and programming right. a feature that really would make collaboration actually pretty easy. Yeah, I think uh, we which talked is really about cool. that when they released it. I remember us like really like looking forward to the collaboration thing. Yeah. Be able to send tracks to somebody, you know, and they have what you got and you don't have to fiddle with it. Totally agree. Yeah, that part's very innovative, I think. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Yeah. So, yeah, Yeah. I mean, full marks for the most part, I would say, for Spitfire on this. It's it's a pretty cool, um, it's a pretty cool project. So, yeah, Mm -hmm. I think for me, like I've turned it into like my sketching thing. Like it's a little template, you know, it's like what? hundred less than 100 tracks i think it's like 75 or 50 with all the everything that comes with the free version and i loaded it all up into a little template and i want and i was like doing what kind of what chris said i started a little track just to see what i could do with it you know like see what mm-hmm. what i could come up with you know um it's very basic but it it, it 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 makes you focus on writing music and not worrying about tracks and you know what i mean and all this stuff mm-hmm. is very stripped down it's just like, no, let's just focus on what I'm trying to write. And here's, I got everything I need to do a, a, a decent track. I mean, you know, right. all, if you have spiccatos, you have, you, I can't remember if the free version has legatos or not. I think it's no, just sustains, No, I don't think it right? does. It's yeah, just it's just sustains. Long. Okay. That's right. It might have like yeah. a fake legato. It's got legato pizz- pizzicato spic- and spiccato. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, the, your basic, you know, articulations to do a, 
a decent enough track. I mean, let, let's just mm-hmm. say, I mean, not all tracks today. It's, it's either sustain, uh, staccato. <laughs> yeah, every, yeah. Right. Staccato. Not everybody yeah. needs, you know, Bartok pits yeah, and, right. uh, and uh, you know, Colenio or whatever. Yeah. Oh, you've been mm-hmm. using Cine samples. Um, mm-hmm. <laughs> I could tell yeah. <laughs> that's the, the Bartok. <laughs> right <laughs> it's the strings um but yeah no i think for for like like for new people that are just getting to the this is a no-brainer for free wait two weeks get it and if you love it upgrade and then it, you can kind of navigate from there and if you like spitfire then yeah the, the they have plenty of libraries for you to to blow money on mm-hmm. um, <laughs> so uh yeah i mean um it, it's a no-brainer I, like I said, I, I signed up for that. I was like, hey, hey, why not? Because I remember we talked about them when they re- announced this, and I was kind of interested in, with the c- collaboration stuff. And when they offered the free, I was like, yeah, I'm going to sign up for that. No, wh- Yeah, that's, that's easy. So, yeah. Right. Well, and they offer a lot of templates. Um, yeah. Some of them are only, I think, for the pro version. Um, certainly their giant template, I think, includes all the instruments. So if you tried to load that with Discover, I'm not sure mm-hmm. how it would spaz out, you know, when it right. tries to load a... a bass clarinet or whatever that it doesn't have but um the template for the free version i think I've, i threw that thing up in like 30 minutes i mean it's very mm, quick yeah i mean it's it's yeah yeah it's your basic orchestral image what i loved about it though is like the percussions they add, you know they gave you a good percussion percussion instruments in the free version you know timpathy symbols all in one patch you know um uh, glockenspiel i think and mm-hmm. the thing i think i think they should have included was a piano their basic right. they sh- I swear to God, they should have, because that's part of an orchestra. Is it the You know, Spitfire mm. doesn't have a really, in my opinion, mm-hmm. a really great concert piano. Yeah. Uh, like, the it, one that they do no have matter is what, kind of... Want. They have Hans Zimmer, which is fine. There's nothing wrong with Hans Zimmer piano. I've used it before. Um, I actually think it's in the Discover Hope trailer for Halo. Um, <laughs> but uh, uh, it, um, it, it's in. not my favorite piano ever. It's really good in certain situations, but it's, I, I don't know. It's not, I don't really like it. And then they have like that, uh, Ulfer Arnold's felt piano, mm. which is, yes. I mean, just exquisite, but it's a felt piano. So that's they, not going to yeah. work. They do have orchestral grand piano though. It's 49 oh, bucks. Okay. I do have it, that. but yeah, to your point, it's, it's, if it's not in a Spitfire stuff, it's very hard to get in there. To me, I think it's very thin sounding. If I remember correctly, yeah, it's been a while since I've used it. That's what Hans Zimmer piano is. Yeah, it's very. It's just like it doesn't like compared to something like QL pianos. To me, it's not yeah. nearly as good. Uh, it's not nearly as 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 just the rich. Uh, texture you don't get um so it'd be nice to see them do like a real piano library yeah. and maybe it's uh, you know throw that into piano. something i but don't know uh, i just think i i don't think that's their market i mean that's why they did hans zimmer if, if it doesn't have a name attached to it i don't think anybody's really interested i mean i don't know it's sure. spitfire well, everybody and buys a everything. million sample libraries yeah and honestly does anyone need anything more than cine piano no there you go i like cine piano <laughs> just, go get that. just pick that up yeah it's yeah, a great piano i love it's it. a great just like neutral piano Me- like, it's like right? needy like, too yeah. it can get that like bite that you need and mm-hmm. i like olaf arnold's i like his piano that the, oh like, yeah the take on the what is it the ourselves. soft piano or whatever yeah love it man yeah, it's for me, it exquisite. Works. Yeah, it's exquisite. But like, that's a very specific sound. Right. Like, you're not gonna want to do like, <laughs> you know, play Moonlight, you know, yeah, Sonata right. Movement Three on that. You it's could. not gonna sound good. <laughs> uh, but yeah. Anyway. The ambient yeah. version of Moonlight Sonata. Yeah. <laughs> right. Well, actually, you know, probably the first movement of Moonlight Sonata that yeah. everyone knows that probably sound great on that. But the rest of it, not as much. Right. So. Cool. Well, let's move into the meat and potatoes of the episode. Probably the one that's gonna ruffle some feathers here. I don't know. Um, <laughs> so let's let's go ahead and move on to the drama of the month for Spitfire. This is probably gonna probably last all year. I don't know. I think it might die out. I, don't, I I'm not sure. Um, is the Westworld contest? So just to give some context here, I did not participate. Curse, Curtis, did you guys participate? Nope. Not at all. <laughs> I downloaded the video and dropped it in just to play with it, just because, yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, having a version of a high-end TV show right. with 
the score removed is Good practice. Uh, very yeah. rare yeah. to have. Like, that's very hard to get. So I, I downloaded the video just to mess with it and was trying out some stuff. I was trying to, like, oh, well, what if I did the whole thing in 7-8? Would that be cool? And then I tried <laughs> it, and I was kind of like, eh, it's fine. Um, I will and, say that uh, the scene they chose was really weird, but I guess I understand it's a contest. They wanted to see creativity, I guess. Um, like I said, like I just wanted to say, I don't have any skin in the game. I did listen to the piece. I do have some feelings, but I wasn't as outraged as I've seen. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know how you guys feel, but um, does anybody want to go first? Or, um... yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah, go ahead. Let's let Chris go first because okay. Okay. I'm probably going to rant for a long time <laughs> about this. So I'll let him yeah. get his thoughts yeah. out of the way before I just sure. okay. elephant cool. through sure. sure. here. Yeah. So, I mean, like for me personally, I, I didn't uh, participate in myself kind of like Curtis. I downloaded, had some fun with it. And then I was like, yeah, that's that's kind of fun. Um, and I, I don't remember where I first read about the results. I think it was maybe on Facebook. I was, I was like I saw a post in a group and they're like, oh, the results are up. And then um, and then I went on the on Spitfire's channel. and I was like, OK, you know, a nine minute video results video okay that's that's fine you know but then i look down at the like dislike bar I'm like <laughs> wait what is happening and it's like split down the middle and then every you know couple of minutes i refreshed and you know the dislikes just grew and grew and then the comments literally they were coming in like 20 per second so i was like <laughs> what is happening so i watched i watched the video and i was and i you know admittedly i was taken aback i i didn't um i didn't expect that uh david to to write in that style at all i think what, what stood out to me first was that because the way that piece was arranged, the way the chiptune elements were placed in there, it, it seemed very lighthearted and very fun. And yeah. a lot of people thought that was kind of counterintuitive to how the scene should actually play out. And they were there were comments like, oh, this scene would have never actually been chosen in the film. And Spitfire, you know, they were on something or whatever. Um, and yeah, I mean, understandably, a lot of people were confused by that decision and didn't really understand. But then... And I, I think I think what really put the nail in the coffin was when people were saying, "Oh, this guy knows this uh, knows JJ like personally. No, no wonder they like he won, but he proved mul on multiple times like he yeah he has really no connection to him. He just worked as like a sound editor or whatever on one of the films, and he would never actually get to know him uh, from that. So then it comes down to why did Spitfire really choose that piece? And and I I kind of explain this in. Um, in a video, private video um, subscribers. But basically, I, I think that they just, um, well, number one, it definitely stood out as being very different. But then there are a lot of entries, I'm sure, that stood out as well. Mm -hmm. So then they, they must have found, like, yeah, his entry kind of lined up very, very well with all the, like, every, everything that was happening. Um, and, th there were, yeah, there was just maybe something underneath that uh, they felt really, really clicked with them, um, you know, those those chip tune elements uh, and how they interacted with the action on the scene, how how it all came together. Um, Christian and and Paul themselves said like it was a very, uh, it was it was very well put together and not not just very very different, but the way it incorporated with the action was very well put together. Um, other than that, I mean, I personally, uh, like I said, I I didn't really participate, so I can't really um, have too much emotional investment into it. But mm -hmm. I, I I do want to say that. You know, David absolutely. He first of all, he dare, he wanted to do something very different, which he did, and what he did actually worked in the judges' eyes, and that's ultimately all that matters. So we right. we can say all we want that you know, oh that didn't deserve to win or that would never be used, but we don't know. We we just truthfully we we can't know um, if it's going to be used or not because that comes down to the director and and everything like that. So. Yeah, it's just good learning experience for all of us. And um, I think just us composers in general are more sensitive people because, you know, we create stuff and we're very protective of what we create. So a lot, a lot of people are saying, oh, this, you know, the community is toxic and it just brings out the, the worst in everybody. Um, but on the other side, I, I, I can see why that's the case, especially when something unexpected like this, uh, this result happened. I wouldn't say people are necessarily um, toxic unless they're actually you know, attacking the composer himself and, and trying to bring him down. Yes, that's very bad behavior. Mm -hmm. But in general, if you and they understand why this is actually happening, I think it's totally valid to explore those reasons and um, not not feel afraid to, you know, discuss different opinions. It's really important. Right. I don't but, think I don't think they were attacking the, the winner. I really don't. I think they were attacking 
the judges and Spitfire because yeah, most people were attacking Spitfire, yeah. but there were a few who actually went onto David's video and left right. hateful comments. So that, well, that, yeah, that, that those people are just, it's just yeah, jealousy. But... It's just like, you know, it's just to stir up controversy. <laughs> like to give it my point of view, I listened to the track and I was with it. The first, the, like I was like with that first section, when it introduces it, I was there. Like to me, that sounds legit. Like that, right. that was legit. And then yes, when the eight bit thing kicked in, I was jarred. And I was like, mm -hmm. what? And the, the thing <laughs> is the audio changed. Like it was like doing weird things with the audio and I couldn't hear the audio. And it was like, it distracted me from the scene, which first case in point, what I've been taught or what I know is when you're scoring a film TV, the music is not supposed to pull you out of the scene. Mm -hmm. It's supposed mm -hmm. to, it, you're not even supposed to realize it's there. And like I said, when I first heard the music, I was like, I'm with it. I was watching the chase. I was seeing those cars. And then right when that chip tune thing or whatever came in, I don't care. Uh, I mean, it's creative. And I, I was trying to find the actual, the rules of like what you needed to hit. I think there was things that they wanted, right? They did get 11,000 mm -hmm. interest. That's a lot of people. Oh yeah. And um, so, I mean, like I said, it, it pulled me out of it and it's not the composer's fault. He did exactly what he was doing. He, he made it interesting. He caught the attention. He did everything you needed to do in a competition right competition is doesn't show your chops a competition is you're just trying to show that hey i can win something like a rap battle like i mean this is probably really weird but like you know if you're gonna go watch a, a rap battle two guys rapping it, what are you gonna go with you're gonna go with somebody that's like you're doing it really fast and like really cool and it catches your attention and gets you is it really great i don't know but you know we mm. can't judge that it's that's what a competition is it's just to show your best thing, whatever you got, put it forward. And he did that. And it's a mm -hmm. nine minute piece, right? I mean, it's a long scene and it just keeps going and going. And it's like, he just, it just, after a while, it just seemed like it just didn't fit with the style he was writing. Like, it's just like, mm -hmm. Hey, I'm just going to throw in this thing over here because it's cool and it's creative. Like the music, his actual like scored thing. I was with it the whole time. I was like, this is yeah. awesome. You take that chip tune stuff out of there. And I think it would probably, it wouldn't stand out. Like that's just my personal right. opinion. I really think so. Um, yeah, yeah, and I, and also, um, I, I you know when I was listening to, it, I think one of the impressions I got was like, yeah, this this um, chip tune sounded super creative. Um, at the same time, I felt the the chip tune itself was mixed a little bit too loudly yes. on top. It sounded like Super Mario, dialogue, right? Sorry. And I kind of felt like it. Drowned. <laughs> it sounded yes, like Super Mario. Yes, it's but, exactly right. Super Mario. It's not like it was right, lifted right, from right. Super Mario, <laughs> and like. I get what he was doing. He was like trying to set it up like a game stage. Like literally, sure. that's what it was. Like I could yeah. see his idea is like, this is like, hey, it's like a video game. I'm going to use the video game kind of thing with it, the aesthetics. I'm going through a level. I'm fighting. I'm going to the boss. Blah, blah, blah. And then I win the fight and he does that. Like just like yeah. Mario. And I'm like, okay, that's cool. But like, like I said, just from my philosophy and from what I've been taught of, of scoring, it's like it took me out of the scene. I'm not watching the scene. I'm listening to the music. That's that's like that's rule number one. It, that's not what mm -hmm. that's not what scores used to work. But then you got to understand this is a competition. So, you know. Yeah. And I uh, yeah, get why I people's saying, outraged. I, I think, yeah. No, I was just adding that. I I I, I feel like, um, it, it, like it compounded because like the. The, the audio and the in the video, uh, in the dialogue felt mm -hmm. a little bit too low in comparison yes. to the tune itself so it felt like it was drowning it out just a little bit so you know um, pe people are taking issue with that as well but well, I think in any case yeah. but I think everybody was coming from this as if if I'm gonna score this thing I'm scoring it because it's gonna be shown on TV this is sure. they're gonna select this because this is what they would show if it was on live television I think that's right. where everybody's coming from and that's why we have an outrage because it's like Dude, you would not show this on HBO. Like this mm -hmm. would not go. And if it did, uh, I don't think so. It wouldn't work. But uh, right. yeah, like I said, I I didn't submit. I, I'm not flacking the composer one bit. And I know there's conspiracy theories that like like you mentioned, Chris. Like oh, he knows JJ and it's all this stuff. But he's pretty much everybody's debunked that. I've watched a few people's composers' videos, you know, just to see what people mm -hmm. thought. And. Yeah. I thought about doing my own video, but I don't really have much to say. It's like it's a competition. Who cares? Right. You know, exactly. and move on. And the thing I think what a lot of people are, are – this is my last point, and it's – Curtis can have the, have the floor. But um, I think a lot of people were banking like, oh, my God, if I win, this is it. This is my break. I'm going to – that's it. I'm going to be a composer. And it's like 
that never happens through competition. You're going to get some people, you're going to get some maybe eyeballs on your work and it might come into a job, but this isn't your break, you know, winning a competition. Sometimes, yes, but I, I really don't think so. Because, like, I know there's, like, guitar competitions, like, people that are shredding all the time. It's like, okay, cool, you, you can show, f- like, fancy stuff, but can you really write anything? Like, you know what I mean? Like, memorable or meaningful. And like I said, this score, I'm not cutting down his work because, like I said, if I pull you pull out that chiptune stuff, like, the first maybe 30 seconds of the video, I was in, man. I was like, this is amazing. It's, it's, it's doing exactly what it's supposed to do. And then once that stuff started happening, I, I, that was it. Game over for me. It yeah. was like, it just, just takes me out of the scene. I'm not watching it. I'm listening to the music and not watching the story. So that's all I have to say about it. Curtis, the floor is yours, right. sir. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. Well, now I better live up to expectations. Oh, no. I'm sure okay. you got some good stuff. Yeah. So first of all, the first thing I want to talk about was people being mad at Spitfire. Now, I understand why people sometimes get mad at Spitfire. Like, it kind of can be irritating to get, like, you know, this is our new revolutionary, you know, like, mousetrap library. It's going to completely change the industry. We recorded, you know, mousetraps in air, right? Or, like, uh, you know, this is our fantabulous, uh, world-changing kazoo library, (laughs) right? Like, uh, it's the most innovative thing. Recorded at air studio. You know, like, I get that that approach annoys people and by and large i think that's fine if that bothers you i I get it i mean i think people get really really um i hate to use such crude language but butthurt about it uh more than i think is really necessary to the 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 sort of quote-unquote crime (laughs) of of marketing but but i get why people don't like that um as far as i'm concerned spitfire is pretty much blameless in this situation. Like if you go through it, like chronologically, let's think about this. Spitfire managed to get the people who make one of the singularly most popular and culturally relevant shows that is like airing today to not only participate in this, but to provide a work print of this scene with the original score, which was uh, ride of the Valkyrie removed from the picture that alone is is a gift to the community do you know how hard it is to find footage and scenes of that quality that require that much work to put together car chases explosions you know aaron paul and all those other actors and actresses um of that caliber and quality. Do you know how hard it is to find footage like that with the music removed for you with all the dialogue and all the SFX still in it? Like it it is incredibly rare to be able to get that and to get creators to provide something like that is really hard because they do not like to have that available, right? Right. Like they Mm. do not like people to see that and understandably because it's unfinished, right? When you strip out the music, it eventually, it eventually, excuse me, it essentially becomes an unfinished work, right? Right. Um, so them even getting that is a gift to you. And if you didn't download this and keep it around to like practice on, like I'm so I, you should have, I mean, hopefully it's still up or you can find it on YouTube or something. I mean, second thing I would mention is that, can you imagine what it's like to convince HBO to allow 11,000 people to upload a clip of Westworld to YouTube without their copyright lawyers? Like, right you know, having an aneurysm, like (laughs) this is amazing. This is a, again, and uh, this sort of transitions, this is a gift too from the creators of this show, right? That they're allowing us to play in their sandbox. They're allowing us to do this. It's, it's, we should really be thankful to both Spitfire and the people who work on Westworld for allowing us to do this, because this is a really, really nice opportunity. And I think that, you know, I understand that people disagree with the the decision and that's fine. And that there's nothing wrong with saying, you know, I don't think it worked because of this, like what Todd just did where he was explaining that it didn't really work for him. That's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, but I think it should start with like some acknowledgement that like you were given a really cool, basically present a gift, mm-hmm. uh, the ability to have access to this. So like when I see people, people going after Spitfire and the show's creators, I, I it, it, it gets my hair, my hackles up. Cause I'm like, are you, I would, you know what I would have done in like 1998 to have access to a work print of even nine minutes of an action scene with no music on it. Like that's, that's insane. Mm. That's amazing. So that was my first sort of thing, you know, and then, you know, you sort of 
uh, take take the, the that that and you think about like that Spitfire went through eleven thousand entries. You know they claim they listened to all of them, and you can believe them or not believe them, but they said they did it, and I I believe them. They have no reason to lie, right? right. Like yeah. they they did. They listened to eleven thousand entries on this and whittled it down, and then they put it in front of J.J. Abrams, uh, Jonathan Nolan, and I, I'm sorry I can't remember the woman who's the uh, co-creator, uh, Lisa Joy, I think. Anyway, they they put it in front of the actual people who. Oh, and the composer. And they put it in front of the actual people. And now, granted, that was not a vast majority of entries, but they put it in front of them. So a bunch of people got their music in front of those people, and that's amazing. Um, the next thing I want to talk about is the rules. And that is, you know, in I, I went, you know, people were mad that they, they thought the audio had been screwed with and blah, blah, blah. I went and looked in the rules. It said you could not change the clip. And I agree that maybe they could have been a little bit more specific there. That's fine. But also, Paul Thompson made a video where he's like, you know, taking time out of what I'm sure is a busy schedule listening to 11,000 entries to explain how to put the video into like Logic and other DAWs, right? Mm -hmm. How mm -hmm. to how to do a tempo map, all stuff that a lot of people don't know, right? Like this may be their first time doing this. So thank you, Paul, by nine. the way. Yeah. Oh, I got like, one like, thing. One thing before I lose it. Sorry. No, no, no. Please. It was interns listening to it. Trust me. These four judges did not listen to all those tracks. I oh, guarantee of it. The judges yeah. Didn't I'm just saying. And the, and the rules specifically yeah. state that they would not listen yeah. to the tracks. The rules specifically state they will whittle them down to finalists and then show it to the show's there creator. Right. right. Like right. it specifically says that in the rules. They specifically mention that over and over and over again. Um. Anyway. In the video where Paul shows you how to put it into Logic and how to like make sure everything's matched up and like like what happens when you put a video in Logic, which by the way is not always obvious, um, he talks about how this is how you then mix the audio, <laughs> right? Like he talks about like doing uh, mixing of the audio in that video. So to me, that seems pretty clear that if you spent five minutes watching that video, you would know you can you can mess with the audio. Now some people disagree with that, and again, I think. Probably in a future competition would be nice to see that spelled out more. That's probably a fair critique, but I don't think that what this guy did in his entry was anything more than duck a few of the sound effects to put some 8-bit stuff over them. So I, I, I think that's fine. Uh, that, that to me, you know, again, if you're annoyed by that, okay, but like I don't think it's like a really big criticism. Um, the next – and clearly to me, what you couldn't do was edit the actual video, right? Change a cut – move a scene, et cetera. That seems to me to be pretty clear. So I think people who are complaining about that, you know, I think there's some legitimate criticism, like maybe it could have been clearer, but, but it's kind of like a, it's like a nitpick, right? Um, yeah. As far as his entry, it's masterful <laughs> to me, right? Like just in terms of how well it flows with the scene, it's, and Todd, you were even talking about this, like the way that it actually matches the picture in terms of like, um, making sure that it gets out of the way of dialogue, making sure that it, you know, actually matches what's happening on screen and flows with the visuals. It's pretty good. It's really, really good. And if you watch a lot of the entries, not most of them are not very good at that. They, they play over dialogue and make it impossible to hear things. They, um, you know, m maybe they, they, uh, go, you know, cover up a big sound effect with a bunch of music, which by the way, your music's just going to get ducked because the same people that make the sound effects make the, uh, make the mix and they'll duck your music to put their sound effects. So get out of the way of sound effects too, if you can. Yep. Um, so I, I thought that was really good. Now, as far as the style goes, um, you know, the context of the scene demands that you do something weird here. Because everything that has happened in the show prior to this scene is bizarre because this guy is on drugs, right? Prior mm -hmm. to this scene, they're playing cheesy detective noir music. After the scene, they're playing just ridiculous over-the-top romantic music. Um, you know, during this scene, like I said, they originally had Ride of the Valkyrie in there, which is pretty – I mean, that's pretty humorous, right, to have that in there. So it seems to me – that you should be doing something kind of strange and a little bit off kilter. And you talk about like this scene. One of the cool things about them choosing this scene is uh, a lot of people complain there's no visual indication of like what style you should use, but that's what makes it perfect for this competition, right? Like if there were 
eight bit explosions, right? Like they had somehow gone in and messed with the explosions to make them look eight bit. There would be one possible approach to this scene. Mm. If there were, you know, actual opera people like standing on the balconies of the buildings, right? As he's hearing opera in the original uh, mix, that's all you could do, right? The cool thing about this scene is that a hundred percent of the drug trip comes from the music, right? So to me, as weird and as drug trippy as you can get in the music and as stylistically unique that you can get in the music, you know, that's the best possible approach. And it seems obvious to me that that would be the approach. And people who are like, I can't believe it's not just like string ostinatos and, and, and synth loops. I'm like, have you seen the clip? Like to Mm. me, that seems obvious. So that, that was another thing that, that sort of bugged me about a lot of the criticism. Um, and, you know, to your point, Chris, I agree with your criticism. I think the 8-bit stuff is too forward in the track. I think it's a mm. little too present. It would be nice right. to see him do some stuff to, like, make it a little bit more drug trippish, sure. right? To make it a little bit more, just less direct, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, and, and, you know, but that's like a minor note. Like, that's mm-hmm. the kind of note where, like, you get the note from the director. Hey, you're doing a great job. What if we could just, like... You know, like push this back in the mix a little bit. Like that's a tiny note. Um, And by and large, I think he does a pretty good job and it's humorous and it's inventive and it's fun. And if it's not your like preferred style, like I think that's fair. Like I think everything Todd said is fair. I think that's perfectly fair. Um, But I think the notion that 8-bit shouldn't win this because it, quote, doesn't go with the scene, I think – I don't – I I just – that that criticism doesn't track for me because – I think that would be like saying opera doesn't fit in the scene. Therefore, using Ride of the Valkyrie should not be in this scene, right? Mm-hmm. Whereas it I, works in the scene originally. It works great in the scene originally. Yeah. So I think – well, I think the disconnect here is I think people – everyone approached this. I think I mentioned this is this is what it would be the final version that's on TV. Like I think that's what everybody approached it from. That's the, the disconnect. Show if this is what if they had really loved it and liked it better than Ride of the Valkyrie. I don't think that there's anything about this approach. You know, people say they never would have put this in the show. Did you see what they put before and after this in the show? It's equally weird and cheesy. Like I think the notion that they would quote never put this in the show. Of course Remember, they would. No, but I'm saying the people that not not the judges and not um the you know the people at at Westworld and Spitfire. Mm. I think the people us the people that are submitting to this they're actually they're treating it like it's a job like this is a job cue that i'm getting well, I see what you're saying. you yeah, see what i'm yeah, saying yeah. like that's the disconnect people treated this like this is legit like oh my god if i'm gonna score westworld this scene this is how i would do it and i think david had the great he's like no this is a competition the win to competition i have to catch ears i have to catch people that's how you win you, you know mm-hmm. what i mean it's like one of those yeah. things you have to have flash pizzazz. i agree with everything you said curtis and chris I'm saying the disconnect here with the community is they all took it as this is legit. They they didn't score it as a competition. They scored this as like, I'm going to get hired for the job. You see what I'm saying? Like Mm -hmm. there's like a disconnect there. And I think that's why the outrage is because I'm reading, I was reading the comments of the video and everybody's like what they were saying. And that, that's what it sounds like to me. It's like, there's a disconnect there. I don't think the rules might not have been, I don't know. Maybe just people just, that's the way they took it. They interpreted it wrong. And like I said, I'm not blaming David. Like I said, I like this piece. I'm just saying for me, it like it jarred me and it took me out of the scene. But like you said, I haven't seen the original. You know, I just watched right. his and I haven't seen it. And I like I said, I don't have any skin in the game because it's a competition. And, and yeah. this is why I agree with your 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 comment. Right. It does kind of take you out of the scene. And that is exactly what the music is supposed to do. It's supposed to take you a little bit away from the visuals because he's on drugs. Right. Like it's not supposed to feel have huge amounts of like realistic verisimilitude. Right. It's supposed to feel kind of like a drug trip. So to me, if your music doesn't take you out of the scene a little bit and provide this like stylistic um, thing, like you're doing it wrong. Like you're literally not following the brief to me. Mm -hmm. Right. Like you talk about people approaching this like they're scoring the show. I think if you were hired to score this episode of Westworld and you turned in you know, generic Hans Zimmer string ostinatos, they would be like, no, this isn't what we hired you for. We want something strange and different and unique because this guy is on drugs. Right. But what did the brief say? That's what I'm saying. Like, I, I can't find it. I'm looking at the, com- I'm looking at the website. I can't find it. Like what were the actual the brief rules? was score this, score this scene. Here's the original scene. Go. 
Like yeah, it was, see, you could do whatever you want. Yeah. So now. Yeah. Okay. Now, I, again, I, I think that five minutes on HBO, uh, uh, HBO's YouTube channel, you could figure out all the things that I was talking about. Mm-hmm. Uh, you don't, ha- you know, they specifically said you don't have to watch a show because, right? Because HBO is expensive. You know, you don't want to necessarily make people go out and buy an iTunes episode or whatever. Right. Sure. But go to YouTube, like do basic research, go to YouTube's or HBO's YouTube channel, and they have a featurette on this very scene, on this exact part of this scene. And they talk about like what their intentions were, what their approach was, you know, and like people are like, well, they didn't say you had to do that. I'm like, yeah, you get it. When I get something for, you know, a client, I don't necessarily get 100 percent of the thing. That doesn't mean that I don't go out and like look into like the context of this or then come back with them with an email of like explain more of what your approach is. Right. Like and that kind of leads into my my final thing I want to talk about, which is like what this means for people who want to be in commercial music. Right. If you want to be in commercial music, the only person who is right about your music is the person who is hiring you to make it. That is the only person who is correct, right? right? Yep. If you write something for somebody and you love it and it's great and you hand it to them and they want you to rewrite it, you rewrite it because yep. you know what? You were wrong. <laughs> like, yep. The only mm-hmm. mark of success is that your client is happy. And that's the last thing that I'll say about the competition is the actual people who judged the final entries are literally the client. Yep. It's literally the show's creator. It's literally the composer who was wor- who works very closely with them. It's literally the, you know, it, like this is literally the people who make the show. So the only correct answer for who is the best entry is their answer. Like that's it. Yeah, it's, exactly. It, yeah. No, I agree. Like, like and that's, if you yeah. can't accept that, you are not ready to work in media composition. Right, but how many of those eleven thousand people are actually professionals? I guarantee right, you right. about more and than. And this half. is why I'm trying to yeah. turn this into like a. Hey, look, if you really hated this and you're really mad about this, A, like your feelings are valid. I understand it's kind of strange. Like it's a little bit off kilter. Yeah. This is a good opportunity to for you to learn though that this feeling that you have right now, you need to learn to to like control it. Yep. And the sort of person who goes on VI control under their real name and trashes <laughs> Bitfire <laughs> and yeah. Westworld's creators anymore. <laughs> doesn't want to work in the industry. I'm sorry. Like yeah. you're never going to get hired. Yeah, you're I'm never going to get hired. Like a perfect like, example. I worked on a short film, you know, local budget, th- nothing. Right. And I thought I did something great, but like they told me no. And it, like, you got to pull your ego out of it. Like when you're mm-hmm. writing music for somebody else, it's not about making you feel good. It's about making them feel good. Kind of like what you said, Curtis, nobody cares what you feel. It's what they want. That's it. End of story. And if you can't get grasp that, you're not going to have a career <laughs> in this field. Hence why I do it part time. Um, right. Right. Not, not that I can't do it. It's just like I do music for me. And um, like if I can make money at it, great. But that's not my goal. Like I just do it for me. And um, and I think you're very right on the money with that, Curtis, your assessment there. But like like I said, I'm play devil, devil's activate. That's what I just like to do is sure. I just yeah. think everybody because they're not professionals and he's a professional. Right. He's a professional. He's been in this this field doing stuff professionally. So he knows that he got the copy. He did his thing and he knew going into it that this is a competition and to win a competition. I have to stand out from the rest of the pack. And he from did. 11,000. Mm-hmm. There you go. Synth loops. And he right. did. And that's what I'm right. saying. Loops. <laughs> and then did it. And then did it. And drums yeah. going. <laughs> boom, 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 right. Boom, 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 yeah. Boom, so, yeah. um, that's what I'm saying. You got to be unique. He was unique. He, he did everything that it said. And you can't blame the composer. You can't blame Spitfire. Just like you said, Curtis, everything you said is, is, is exactly welcome. Welcome to the um, the media field. <laughs> welcome to being a composer. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, put on put on your uh, you know take off your panties and put on your man pants. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's how it is. It's cutthroat. Nobody cares about what you feel. It's about yeah. what they're, they're they're giving you a job and that's what they want and you got to do it. So, and that's well, the thing. And, and, and moreover, Good. like you get to do it, right? Like, yeah. I once had a composer friend of mine talk about how he did like a bunch of different revisions. It was like, you know, 30 revisions for a client one time, right? And they just kept asking for more and more changes. And he said to me a really revelatory thing it was, yeah, I could be mad that they, um, we're coming back and saying this isn't right. We want it different. Or I could look at it as, oh, cool. I get to write more music. Yeah. Right. That's the approach. That's the way you have to approach this. And yep. look, I've entered competitions and then I've listened to the winner and then I've thought, 
eh, I thought mine was better. But like, you're I, always gonna I, think that. Just, That's your ego. Yeah, you're always gonna <laughs> think that. And and well, you might think that. I I don't think that the. So I dabbled with this video. Like I said, I tried a little, a few little things. My stuff was not as good as this. I'll straight up say that. <laughs> um. So, but but like, yeah. It's just like. Yeah, the structure I, was I great. Like you said, I think you mentioned to that. Stop posting under their own names things that are going to get them not hired later even when <laughs> yeah. like that's all i yeah. really want you to do that's why you know you hear there's like frustration in my voice and i kind of tried to start out calm and now i'm all kind of emotionally <laughs> up and the reason i am is because i want to work with you and i'm never going to get to right if you're trashing jonathan nolan on the internet under your real name because you were mad about who he chose right or jj right. abrams or even the spitfire guys who are yeah. big media composers right like just you gotta you gotta learn some tact you gotta learn some some just just like, like you here, can here we go here i got you a good disagree. good thing that's for fun, this. But... somebody told me this a few years ago in the work field corporate america he said you gotta play the game learn to play the game you gotta play the yes. game you gotta play the game that's how the only way you'll be successful learn that and at first when you first hear that play the game what are you talking i'm playing the... let that sink in a little bit let it sink in because sometimes you're going to do things you don't want to do and you have to do it and that was a hard thing for me too but I understand it now. You just got to play the game, man. Get your feelings. Get your emotions. Get you out of it. And just do it. It's a job. And doors will open up for you. Like, just that shield, that barrier, and especially us as composers. Because, you know, what we do is very intimate. It's very, it's, you put, you, you're putting yourself out there. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you're, 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 yeah, you're, yeah, it you're sucks spilling, when you get yeah, rejected. you're spilling it everything into your piece. What yeah. you wrote. It sucks. Yeah. It feels really bad. I just had a cue <laughs> where somebody told me that this section, and then they were giving me the feedback on the section of the cue. And I was like, that's, you know, I, it was hard. Like, yeah. it feels bad. Um, but they're not insulting you personally. They're not insulting yeah. you personally. Like, again, how are you going to look at it? Are you going to look at it as I got rejected or I get to do more? It's growth. Like, it's try growth. try it's to just, look at yeah. it as you get to do more. Try And yeah. on a meta level, I would like to see Spitfire do more of these competitions. So please <laughs> stop making it hard for them by putting 10,000 horrendous comments on YouTube. Right. Like, I would like more like giant high end scenes with the music stripped out to practice yeah, on. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, Please. dude, I'm right there with you. I mean, because it's good Please. practice and like I know yeah. you don't like Spitfire. A lot of these people, like that's no. fine. I get well, that dude, you don't like Spitfire. Think about every but time they come out please. with a library, the outrage. Yes. So there you go. Yeah. These are the people we're dealing with. This is their community. Yeah. They they're very passionate. They're very passionate about Spitfire and their product. Like I said, I just think there was a disconnect with. Everything we've said is valid. I get what you're coming from, but I'm just trying to put myself in the average community person because mostly sure. people are not professionals. They probably haven't even done this. This is like their first maybe time doing something, and they thought this is their ticket. Like, I'm going to score this thing like it's my job, and I'm going to impress everybody because I'm writing the best freaking music, and I'm going to sit here and tell you right now, dude, sometimes the best constructed whatever music theory all that doesn't matter okay it's about what hits the scene and what hits people and what stands out and like i said this is a competition about what the director had for breakfast and what the direct, that's, that's what i'm saying that's, it doesn't matter no. like how and well if they got written, yelled at yeah. by you know the executive producer because they're behind schedule or right. like you can't control so much of it yeah. and I get why – I get that that's, that that's a sensitive spot and it can be hard to take that. But like and, – yeah. and also, by the way, like if you didn't win, your music wasn't necessarily rejected. Right? But now you have something like, that you can put in your portfolio. Look, exactly. I scored this Westworld scene. Mm -hmm. Look what I did. Here's what it. I did for the yeah. Westworld competition. Yeah, there you go. And Use this in your portfolio. somebody loves it. There you go. Yeah. It could get you a job. Think of it right. as what you could do with this and not like, hey, this door closed. Hey, maybe five other doors just opened because you just did that piece. So. Exactly. This is the thing too. Like I'm trying to learn later in my life. I'm, you know, I'm slowly approaching 40 years old. You know, been on this planet for a while and learned some things. You know, um, when I was younger, I like I would be probably in the same boat with these people. But with age comes maturity and stuff. And you know, you got to take a negative and turn it into a positive. I, I'm really trying to focus on that more. And it's like, dude, don't get so bummed about it, man. Let's try to find the positive in it. 
There you go. Take your piece and use it as a portfolio piece for your next. Maybe you can get a job. Maybe you can get a short film. Maybe you can get something else. Look, I did this Hollywood Score it again. Score level. it five different ways. Yeah. Try your own 8-bit version. Score it with a completely right. different genre than 8-bit. Uh, do something super conventional. Do something super unconventional. Yep. Score it with prepared piano and kazoo. Study you know? his piece. And then Study put what all the five guy of those did. videos up on your website to show that you can yeah. – Take a scene and do it five different ways. Right. You know, study like, his piece. Study David's yeah. piece. See what he yeah. did structurally. Like you were saying, Curtis, his structure, amazing. Like, dude, it like flows right through the scene. It's it's hitting the marks, blah, 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 blah. Like I said, all that worked for me. Mm-hmm. Everything worked for me. The the music, it hit it perfectly. It was telling a story. That awesome melody. Yeah. Dun, 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 yeah. Dun, 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 it was telling dun, a story. Dun, dun, it was following dun, dun, it perfectly. Dun, dun, like I said, it just jarred me because it's like you're doing this serious like thing and then all of a sudden we're putting like everybody said, Super Mario. And it's like, to me, it doesn't work. But that doesn't mean it's a bad piece. Doesn't mean it doesn't deserve to win. I'm just saying, for me personally, it jarred yeah. me. And the way fair. I've seen Perfectly music, fair. it's not supposed to take you out of the scene. It's not supposed to jar you. Once you're jarred, you're done. You've lost it. You've lost the real thing that we're here for is the scene, not the music. The music is not the movie. Okay? It can help the movie it can support the movie it could provide the emotional attachment yes because like star wars you take the music out of star wars the first star wars it's like this is ridiculous it's a dude in a suit darth vader you know it's like say but when you put that music in there it's like whoa and that happens a lot but i'm just saying mostly what i what i've been taught or what i've seen and maybe i'm old-fashioned but it's like the music is not supposed to jar you out of the scene it's supposed to support it and provide that emotional context. I mean, I think that's largely true. I think that's okay. true most of the time. I would say that's true until it isn't. You know, but, we, we, and, but yeah, music is different today than it was right. thirty years ago. Things where like yeah. it just depends, yeah, right? right? Like most of the time, that is exactly the right approach. Most of the time, if you're writing, especially like underscore, you're not supposed to be in the way. Don't don't yeah. don't distract. Don't do that. But there will be times where you get to be the lead, where you are carrying the scene. Like yeah. uh, I saw some great guy who's been in the industry for you know a bazillion years posting on VI Control about this, and he talked about how um, how many times he's gotten the uh, this scene really isn't working, so we're really hoping your music saves it. Maybe <laughs> in those cases, your music isn't in the background. Maybe it's a little bit yeah. more forward. Maybe it's a little bit more of the the point, right? Yeah. And. And again, I, I, I get where you're coming from, Star Todd. Wars. I, again, I think that... Dude, seriously, knowing think, about, the context, think about Star Wars, yeah. the original trilogy of yeah. Star Wars. You take John Williams' music out of there, those movies aren't that great. That, that scene of Luke looking They're up terrible. to the twin They're sons awful. and that playing, <laughs> dude, I'm telling you. You take that music out of Luke looking at twin sons, he's just looking at I mean, the... they're genius. George Lucas hired me. Sorry. Sorry. But you Continue. know what I'm saying? Like, that's when music <laughs> overtakes the movie. You see what I'm saying? Like, when yeah. Luke is looking at the twin sons, you take that music out of there, it looks stupid. Mute the music. Mute the music next time you watch Star Wars, and you tell me that it doesn't look dumb. But you put that music in there, he's looking at those twin sons. You're feeling all the emotions that he's probably thinking in his head. But you see what I'm saying? Yeah. That's what music's for. And I'm saying there is a yeah. point where the music does carry the scene. I get that. But in this context... The music to me, because it's a car chase, it's supporting the scene and it's providing that emotional, like you said, Mm -hmm. when those explosions happen, boom, you want something exciting to to emphasize that drama or that action. And like I said, when I'm watching it, I was with it. It was like the the bed that, that starts it, you know? And then all oh, of a sudden, let me goes, say that the people who say that that's ripped off are wrong. It's not. It's just a similar. Harmonies. It's Mario, dude. It is Mario. No, no, no. Listen I to the, the last uh, part. It goes. Did it? Did it? The op- No, no, no. The opening. Oh, the opening. Somebody was claiming oh. that that it's just a rip off. Oh, I've got a child screaming. It's okay. Give me two seconds to. <laughs> oh, <it's- laughs> but you know, like uh, I'm just saying, like once I heard that though, it jarred me, and I'm like, yeah. okay, that's different. But like, it's not supposed to be jarring. That's like. That's like uh, I, I I'm totally right. in agreement with what Curtis is saying. Like I totally agree with him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. just from my context, I'm telling you my first impressions when I watched mm-hmm. it. Like I didn't know mm-hmm. anything going into it. I just like oh I'm gonna. And I don't think those are that's like yeah. an unfair or bad thing to say, Todd. Like right. I don't if it didn't work for you, like I, there's nothing I. But can I'm do. saying like from, I can't convince you into liking it. Right. right no, like, no. I'm, I'm saying I'm I'm it. taking this as two approaches. So from a competition, it works. It's perfect. It works. From a scoring, 
point. Like if this was going to be the final scene, like you said, it was Ride of the Valkyries. Like if somebody was going to put this up, like he was the composer and it was going to air next Sunday, it doesn't work for me. But as a competition, it works for me. Do you understand? So there's oh, yeah, two absolutely. mindsets And there. the difference between yeah. me and you is that it works for me in both contexts. Okay, okay. okay. Um, like I think it actually works great given what the scene is about. So right? like, let me ask you this. To me, as much as the music can take you out of the scene and yeah. be weird and be forward and be the thing that like you're actually paying attention to, the better. Because this scene okay. literally is using the music to literally change the genre of the show mm -hmm. from action robots to something else. Like that okay. is the okay. point of the music in the scene is to change the genre of the show because the drug he's taken changes – his perception of reality to a literally different genre than what he yeah, is. Yeah, I feel like if both Todd and I were both like avid watchers of the of the series, we'd probably um, appreciate how it works with the scene um, a lot more and be able to understand like all the nuances and stuff behind it, like like you're explaining, Curtis. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but yeah, but just because he's taking drugs doesn't mean the music's got to get all funky and weird. Like, go back and watch a bunch <laughs> it of does movies in the scene preceding and after, dude. Right? Again, that might not be a choice that you would right, make right, as right, the right. director, but. You know, I, dude, go, I'm right with you. I, I agree with you. I'm you just, know. I'm trying to, I'm trying to play devil's advocate, and I'm trying to tell you like why it doesn't work for me in a certain aspect. Because like, parts of it doesn't work for me. It's like, what the hell is this? Mm -hmm. It's like, what the hell is Super Mario? Because like when I hear that music and the way he played it, the way he's doing it, like I told you, he's laying it out like he's like this is a a level five in Super Mario Brothers. That was what I felt from it. Like, because it's structured that way. Oh, you got the power up. Boop. Doo -doo 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 -doo. And it, like, you know what I'm saying? And then at the very end of the piece, it does the climb up. Like when you finish the level in the first Mario, it goes. It does that. It runs right up to there. Right. Like he finished the level. So from that point of view, I get it. He hit it. The structure, boom, nailed it. So he approached it as if it was like a level in a video game. That's what I got out of it. So the music's playing, but then those are the sound effects from the drugs that he took. Like, yes, he did everything like you just said. Creative, he hit every mark that the competition asked for to recreate, re-envision this scene. He did it. He And I'm totally in agreement with the winner. Totally in agreement with him winning. Well, I don't know if I'm even in agreement with the winner because I don't know what all <laughs> – I didn't listen to 11,000 entries. There's probably right. one that I like better than that. But I can see why they chose it. It's probably weirder. Because it sticks out. Like everybody's yeah. talking about it. So obviously it has some merit. That's what I'm saying. Like they chose it because it, it touched people. It, it was unique. It must have been unique out of 11,000 entries. That's what I'm saying because I bet you, like you said, Curtis, most of the entries were, dun, 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 you know what I'm saying, and the drums, dun, 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 dun. and then with, and by the way, you know, if you're French a person horns, who put thirty French that and... sort of entry in there, and it was just like a lot of synth pulses and right. um, string ostinatos and stuff, like I hope that you don't walk away from this thinking that I am making fun of you. That's probably that is how I was kind of approaching it at the beginning when right, I tried. Right. So I am talking about myself when I talk about that too. So. Yeah, right. No, 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 we're not – I'm not judging anybody. I'm just saying from my point of view, like from a competition, his probably stood out between the you know the 11,000 entries because he did something new with it. Oh, absolutely. That's what absolutely. I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, yeah, There's absolutely. a place in the drums and true. all that stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because then he, there was guitars in there. I heard some guitars well, going again, on. again, this goes back to yeah. the thing I was saying about like um, like this is why this clip is such a good choice, right? Yeah. Like the car chase itself, like a lot of people said, well, it's too slow and it's kind of cut weird or whatever. Like, I don't know. I, that's, I, to me, it's like, do the visuals matter? Like your job is to score it. It doesn't matter. Right. Like, right don't right. even, con don't yeah, even yeah, think yeah. about that. Stuff. But, but, um, but I think that's why one of the reasons why like people will say this competition has been such a disaster. I'm like, no, it's actually been a pretty much a masterclass, right? Like they chose the perfect clip. Like of all the clips in Westworld they could have chosen, this is probably the best one for a competition because it has the most um, potential for variety, right? Um, like they could have just done an action scene that is meant to be an action scene that has no you know, weirdness to it, right? But this one sets up this, this situation where you get to do something super stylistic, um, which makes, which gives you the opportunity to do something truly unique and different. Yeah. Um, so to me like that, that's, that's, I, and again, I'm just going back to that. Like, I understand it didn't work for you. I understand for some people like emotionally it just didn't click with them and I can't like nothing I can say can make you feel better about it. Right. Cause that's like a subjective thing and that's fine. Mm. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, 
I do. The only things that I think are objectively true about it are a, you know, I think the argument that they would have never put this in the show is pretty easily refuted by the things they put in the show, (laughs) right? Like the actual music that's in the actual episode is just as weird, if not weirder. Um, I'm I'm, I'm listening to it right now. Hold on. I'm listening to it right now while you're talking. I'm sorry, Curtis. So everything up until about 36 seconds. So like you said, he takes the drug. That's when the the, the 8-bit Mario stuff comes in. So like I said, he is approaching this scene as it's like a video game. He just got the power up. And once he gets the power up, that's when the the mood changes. That's when it goes to 8-bit. So that's, Mm -hmm. that's how. So like you said, Curtis, it's genius. The structure is great because it starts off with the little piano thing, then it goes into, and then the drums kind of dun 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 dun, dun just like everybody would score, right? And then when he takes the drugs, the drug starts hitting. That's when it changes. So yeah, I like I said, it works. It's just I'm speaking to the first time I ever listened to a piece because that's when you're the most objective. right? Because after you listen to it 500 times, you're hearing things, you're deciphering it. But the first time I heard it, when that kicked in, I was like, what? what the hell am I listening to? But yeah, I mean, I don't know. And, and I would say, yeah. and just, it's not an argument necessarily. Right, right. I'm not exactly, arguing with you either. So. Right, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yes, you were like, what the hell is happening? Yes. Exactly. So that caught my attention. So, right. and it, it keeps you listening. But I guess, I, I guarantee you, 30 seconds of, of, of those 11,000 pieces, they all clicked off. I guarantee you. I bet you most people, the judges... Once they heard the first 30 seconds, they were like, okay, this is cool. And then they heard that, they, they listened to the whole thing. Guarantee it. And I bet you most people, they only listened to about 10, 15 seconds of it, and they clicked off. I guarantee you the judges did, or the interns or whoever. Um, we've been like, Chris, do you have anything? Sorry, I, we've been... No, 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 go ahead. I, I, I said what I wanted to say. <laughs> okay. I just yeah. want to make sure, because like, me and Chris, no, we, can rant. Yeah. We, could, we can go, right. man. We're, yeah, we're... No, I, I ranted. I'm done. I'm done ranting. Okay. I think we... <laughs> I think we covered place. it. We hit it. I think our, we got our points across. Like I said, yeah. from a competition standpoint, I I, I have no I I yeah he sh- he should win because it's freaking creative. It, it it takes me on a journey along with the scene. But from a standpoint, like I said, I'm playing it two ways. If this was going to be on airing this Sunday, I don't know if they would have chosen it. But I think they um, would have chosen it as is. I think they yeah. would have asked for changes like i think you can sort of smooth off some of the rough edges in it a little bit better yeah uh, but but i think that if the intention in the script and we don't have a script if the intention right. in the script was or the and then the genre switches to video game i think they would have been wholly in on this approach just like they voted for it they might have made some minor changes like i was talking to chris uh on discord when we were talking about this and i was like you know what would be really cool is to have it be more like disaster piece where he takes mm. 8-bit and he adds all sorts of cool effects and delays to it and it makes it sound more modern and a little less harsh and i think that kind of approach ultimately would be a good a better like, like you could refine it is all i'm saying um as a direction what i the only thing that i want to argue against is the notion that this direction in its entirety is so absurd that they would have never put it in the show because i think that's demonstrably false um again based on what they I, actually put in the show i think that's if it didn't go full 8 bit like if it just had elements of it with the orchestra it works but like it, i'm i'm listening to it so like at 40 it was like 47 seconds or somewhere around there after the drug kicks in that's when it kicks into the 8 bit like Nintendo score, but when it comes, then it kicks in with the score behind it and it works perfectly. I don't know. It's like I said, I agree that when it's, when yeah. it's, bo- when it's hybrid, it, I, I yes. think it feels better. I would agree. Yeah, yeah, I would that's agree what I'm that. saying. Like, that, but again, yeah. it goes against minor criticism. Right, I right. have a lot of minor criticisms I could make about it. Like, like I said, I would maybe smooth off the, the eight bit. So it's not quite as harsh. I would do what you said. I would probably like mix it a little more with traditional score. It's too loud. Um, too. I, I, yeah, I mean, that, dude, it's you know, so it's uh, so. Like, an engineer's is, job is to fix that later. Yeah, like I mean, the that's mix, not your if they, job as the composer. It's the job is to write something good. Right, right. Yeah, if so, we're just judging I mean, the music, it's great. But if we're talking in the context of the scene, it needs to be down a little bit. And yeah, yeah. It, it, it does pass be, the dialogue, but like when she's volume rise yeah. and blah blah blah. But like, there's nowhere in it where it like. Where you where a volume ride would feel weird because it's like swelling over like dialogue or something, right? Right. Which is something that I didn't see in a, most of the entries I watched. So, 
Yeah, at 104, that's when it kicks into the hybrid. I watched one where there was this cool rock song, and the the composition of the song was really cool. But they're like singing lyrics over dialogue, and I'm like, well, you're never gonna, you're, you're, it's human voice against, it's never gonna work. Like they're gonna have to, to just duck you completely. Yeah. yeah. Well, at 104 is when the drums kick in, and it it turns into hybrid, which I'm, I was in with it, and then the guitars come in. It's just that little in between to get there. Like she's talking a few times, and it's just kind of like distracting a little bit but yeah i mean that's just a mixing thing they would mix it down on the dialogue and then bring it back up like you said a volume fade in but yeah but i think if they were really committed to this they would do some visual changes too right like if this were really actually the scene i would hope and they had really decided that video game was the way they wanted to go they could pick some oh they could have like filtered the the video into yeah yeah yeah, that would work if that was in the scene yeah so this could maybe have changed the way they shot it and like you said edit it um, it works. I mean, I like it. Like I said, I'm not crapping on the piece. I'm just, I was playing devil's advocate, like, yeah. you know, as, as the community, as somebody's not. looking at this, yeah. they were all thinking of this is going to air this Sunday. And if I win, my piece is going to be in the show. I think that's where, that's where everybody was coming from. And they missed the, the fact of, no, 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 put your spin on it. And it's a competition. So you judge competition pieces way different than you would judge an actual gig. Sure. And I, and I do agree with that advice, right? Like when yeah. you're entering competition, it's worth like thinking about the fact that you're not actually scoring Westworld, for example. Right? But I think that's like where wh- everybody was coming from, and that's why we have the outrage. And like you said, from a competition, I guarantee you when they heard that stuff, they listened to this four-minute piece. They did not shut it off. Guarantee you. I guarantee They claim you. they listened to all 11,000 entries, no. and I believe them. I mean, uh, I, they, No, they, I'm talking they, about they, they all the way said, through. They could have started at the beginning and said – no, they claim they listened to them in their entirety. Okay. They claim that 70 employees spent like days and days and days doing this. Okay. Okay. I, I'll, so, I'll give them I, the word. And I believe them. I yeah, do. Yeah. I, I, you may not believe them, and that's fair. I mean, that seems no, like I that's do. really I'm hard. just saying, I guarantee but, you, though, they were they were listening to this intently they when, they get, intently when they got on. Intently and there. interested, and they yeah, were yeah. laughing. It kept them yeah, interested. Yeah, yeah. kept them engaged yeah. with the piece. Because I guarantee you, if we listened to 10,000 of the other ones or whatever, we wouldn't. Because I've done track reviews. <laughs> So but yeah, yeah. No, I I, I get it. I get yeah, it. So I get it. This keeps your interest. So it does everything it needs to do for a competition. Yes. So and, I, and that I am is not in. Yeah, I, I think I they, they made I the agree. right that, choice. That is, and that, that to, to David's credit, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. it is a brilliant submission to a competition. Yeah. Whether, whatever you think about the scene as yeah. a competition submission, it's really good. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, and I'm, and I made that point on VI Control a couple of times. Um, I'm right there with you. Chris, any, any closing remarks? Like, are you in agreement with there or has your yeah, opinion no, changed? I, I, I think actually where I stand is kind of, uh, um, on, on, uh, both sides. Like if, because I, I don't really know the show, um, for me personally with first time, first couple of times hearing it, um, if you ask me, Oh, does that fit? Like, what did you expect? And I would say, no, um, I don't really, I don't really feel that. I don't really understand how that works, but I feel like if I watch the show and I, and I understood the music before and after, then, I might have a totally different viewpoint on it. So, I mean, sure. it's just, it's just, yeah. it, it has to be contextual. Like you have to know right. what, what is happening before and after. Right. And like out of context, then yeah, it's hard to say. But let's right? say from a no, competition. No, I agree with you, Chris. And, and I think that, um, I, I, I think that one of the things I would like to try if for future, you know, like advice to people, like I, like what you just said is really, really key, right? Like if I, understood the context i would approach this differently right Mm -hmm. and my point is that like when i got hired on halo i'm not ignoring all the halo music that's ever been written so if you're really approaching westworld and you're saying what like i'm going to score this like i was hired to score the actual thing you should probably do a lot of research into like (laughs) like what's happening right right that's just my 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 response to that in terms of like advice for next time guys like advice for your careers like think about that but I think um, I've watched like the first couple episodes of the first season. That's about it. They've done a lot of like popular songs and reimagined them. I know. Then they do a Nirvana song, or they've done like very popular popular songs, um, and then they converted them into like you know re- rearranged them basically. So that's just all I know. But other than like the first or the second and third, <laughs> I don't even know because I haven't watched it. So, but I mean, from um, I'll leave with this, Chris. From a competition, though, if you were co- if you were going to be a judge and you heard this piece, just not mm-hmm. even no context of the show, just like from that standpoint, what do you think? Um, 
You know what? I, I, I'm thinking about that. I would say I would probably put it on the side to say maybe. Okay. Because... Because because if I'm if I'm hearing a thousand other submissions that all sound like synth stuff and everything, yeah, and my ears are getting fatigued at this point, and I hear something like that, um, I think my my biological reaction would be, oh, that's refreshing, okay. and then my analytical perspective would say, I'll save that for later because I don't really know if that really fits right now or if it doesn't, okay. and I'll make right now I don't. <laughs> yeah maybe other ten thousand you know what I mean? right so I I, I, to, I don't think I don't think I would discount it immediately I would say we'll see um, but the fact that this person dared to do something so different to what people would expect is admirable and I'll I'll save it and and see you know in the next rounds what happens that kind of thing cool and I think the, I think the takeaway from this is if you were upset of the competition study his piece study what he did listen to the structure interpret what he did like i said i the way i interpret it he looked at this scene as a video game scene he took the drug and bam that's when the 8-bit stuff starts and he's going on a journey like you were in a mario or whatever video game that's what i got from it and that is very creative <laughs> so i think people are missing the point they're just judging the music they're not looking like you like you were talking about curtis the structure all this stuff how it carries a scene how it's doing all these yeah. things which yeah. yeah, so I, I don't think everybody's looking at that, that from maybe that's what the judges saw too, and that's why that it won, not just from the sound. Well, and ask yourself you the know. question: If he had taken this approach, but he had not followed the actual cuts at yeah. all, would he have won? The answer is very clearly to me no. But mm -hmm. right, cool. No, I think we had a great discussion there. I like I yeah. said, I wasn't getting. I was just playing devil's <laughs> advocate, like looking at it from two sides because I because you got to look at it from a competition side. And I don't think that's what people, because most of these people, this is probably their first time ever submitting to a competition. You know, you got to think of the community here. Um, not 11,000 of those entries, not everyone is a professional. <laughs> there's no way. Yeah. So, um, you know, there's a lot of people like us or like me, you know, just probably do this as a, as a hobby. I was secretly somebody hoping somebody would win with just labs instruments and me. <laughs> yes. Like, that's what That'd I was be cool. for. That would that be would cool. Be really cool. Definitely, man. So yeah, I mean, take it as you want. Um, I like I said from from a competition standpoint, I haven't heard the other eleven thousand or ten thousand nine hundred ninety nine pieces, so I can't really judge that. But from what I heard, um, and I, I listened to some of the runner ups too, and they were good as well. But like I can see why they chose this because it's so different and it captures your attention. It does everything it needs to do. It, it moves the story, like everything we've talked about. So yeah. So I hope everybody enjoyed our, our <laughs> lengthy discussion there, <laughs> which we knew it was going I to be. I told you I was going to rant. Yeah. I told you. I no, it's good yeah. because like you. we need stuff like this. You know, we can only talk about so many libraries, and <laughs> you know, this is good mm -hmm. to have. So yeah, I hope Spitfire does offer things like this in the future. I hope they don't get scared off from the blowback. Um, but maybe this will wake people up, but I highly doubt it. <laughs> I mean, because mm -hmm. they get outraged every library. Oh, my God, it doesn't do this. It doesn't do that. Uh, it's like, get over it. It's a library. It's not going to do everything you want it to do. Okay? Right. Um, limitations are good sometimes. Uh, like I said, that's why like I just did that free version of Spitfire. And I was like, let's see what I can create with it. Let's put all the limitations on there. And let's get creative, man. That's what creativity you know, sparks creativity. So, anyway. Hope everybody's enjoyed this episode. I'd like to mention, uh, like we did at the top, you can f you can start finding these episodes on my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Todd K. Edwards. Um, I'm slowly getting them up there. I think I got the first two up there, and they'll drip out over weekly. I'm not just going to bombard them all at once. Also, if you like the show and you want to support us, uh, head on over our Patreon page. You can... Um, Join there and donate as low as a dollar. Um, we will be changing those. I'm thinking one dollar and five dollars, and that's it. Um, it's just to support us, what we do to cover costs, and we will throw in probably some bonus stuff. Like I'm thinking, like doing a monthly hangout in Discord or something. Like we all get together, like you know, for like an hour or something, once a month, chat with everybody from the community or the Patreon people, and that's it. Um, I think that'd be cool. Um, so I'm working on all that stuff. But anyway, uh, you can find all of our links down below or on our uh, website, composingmadesimple.com. All right. Thanks, Chris. Beautiful. Thanks, Curtis. It's good to be back. Absolutely. And we'll be Yay. back uh, next month, hopefully, with another episode with all three of us. Hopefully, everything is going to get better. So <laughs> hope you enjoyed this episode. Please give us some feedback. Head on over to our Discord. You can find all that on our website. And let us know if you like the episode. Mm -hmm.